For those of you who were here last week, raise your hand. What have I been talking about? A boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for my weird hand, I'm okay. I'm gonna talk. Which is? Uh huh. His name is Jubal. And what is he? What is he made for us?
praising the Lord going on. It's really interesting in the verses leading up to it, it makes the, the text makes this big deal about how God is present above or between the chariot of, of the Ark of the Covenant. And that's really going to frame our discussion here. But first, let's look at verse 5. And let's decode some of the symbols. So, David and the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with psalms, with songs and Nabel, or Nabal. Does anyone remember that word? Yeah, it doesn't. Let's see the Hebrew. Ah, oh, and Nabel or Nabal, go for it. It is a small lion. Write that down. <laughs> N-E-B-E-L, I think is the proper spelling. N-E-B-E-L, I think is the proper spelling. Small liar. Okay? Bring him. Okay. So they were um, uh, celebrating the Lord with Song and Nabel and Kinor. Or Kinor. That's a big one. Right? K I N N O R. N N O R. So they're celebrating the Lord with so much. Big ones. And with <laughs> tambourines. Does that, can anybody tell me what tambourines represent in antiquity? Mirth, mirth and joy, right? So in the ancient world, instruments hardly ever are just instruments. It's, it's never just a uh, piano makes noise, whatever. Almost always there's, there's, there's some sort of meaning attached to it. That when this instrument is played, it's supposed to mean you're supposed to think this. So when you have a tambourine, we're supposed to, I mean, it's obvious, it's obvious from the text. It's just really driving home. This is a mirth, joyful, happy event. And then we get this word, castanets. You know, I have a lot of respect for the ESV translators. So every now and then they have a five IQ moment. Castanets are a Spanish instrument. They didn't exist. <laughs> the actual word is menaanea. And I won't make you write that down. I'll make you write down the English version of it. Sistrum is the English word. S I S T R U M. Sistrum. S I S T R U M. Why are we, why are we, why are we? Going so much into instruments today. Well, let's start by giving you a little bit of an idea of what a system looks like and sounds like. Now, I'm going to practice this by saying I'm going to show you an intensely cringy video. It is very cringy. I'm not going to pretend it's not cringy. If I had the money, I would bring you a system and play it for you and show you how it's done. However, we're out of budget. And this is what I got. She does a pretty good job of showing you what a system is, but it is pretty creepy. So, um, and she's dressed, she's like dressed like a pig for our kids. But anyway, but she's going to show you what a system is, and yes, because we're going to talk about these systems and other things, cultures. And uh, yeah, just uh, enjoy. <laughs> Well, 
indicate you are in the presence of deity, which is probably why, in the text we just read, it made such a big deal about talking about how God was present in the tabernacle. Now, go ahead. What was that other one that you said? Um, like a joy question? Henry. Okay, that means that. Joy and mirth, and this means we're in the presence of deity. Now, hold on. That's a pagan instrument. Why are Israelites using pagan instruments? Is that is that pagan? There are. 
Alright, you get the live dog. Give me a dolphin like Dave, where are you going with this? This drum? That big, that big old thing? Oh, yes. All right. Let's see if we get this. Those were instruments that we found in the, in the tomb of King Tutankhamun. I guess all that's one. T U T A N K A H A M U N. Not plug in there. Tutankhamun. Can anybody give me a guess when they think Pharaoh Tutankhamun was? Just a guess. Uh, Probably around 500 BC. 500 way before that. Yeah. Uh, getting close to it. Uh, our estimation is around the 14th century BC. Now, this is going to be important later. So, Tutankhamun lives 14th century BC. Now, there's something else that you see in that picture. And I'm going to let you figure out what it is while we turn to Numbers chapter 10. <laughs> Just came to us. Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. You can ask Luther. He just studied that last year. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, yes, well. okay, uh, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 10. So, Numbers chapter 10. If you have a Bible, turn to Ezekiel. All right. I will volunteer. I will volunteer someone unless someone volunteers to read Numbers ten one to ten. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, "Make yourself two shepherds of silver, of silver first, and you shall make them, and they shall be for the Lord a company for the congregation and for all the people set out. When both." Or 
it. Alright guys, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the verse from Leviticus 25, verse 9. It says, Then you shall sound the loud trumpet on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement, you shall sound the trumpet throughout all the land. So the trump, these two trumpets, these two silver trumpets, um, are part of the um, worship, daily and, and yearly worship at, at the temple. Huh? Oh, the day is 20, uh, 25 verse 9. Uh, indicates that the day of the atonement would have been a big horn or the trumpet blasting day. Now, trumpets are very, very difficult to make. I want to make that very clear. Um, they're not like pipes. Pipes, you can, you know, with a little bit of skill, you can take a bow and you can make a pipe. Trumpets take an immense amount of skill to, to make and an immense amount of skill to play. So, one of the things that teaches us about the tabernacle is, first of all, it wasn't very noisy play. It's not like, you get trumpets blasting all the time, you know, and there's more music too that we haven't covered in the tabernacle. But, the second thing is, is that um, there wouldn't have been a whole lot of trumpets running around the world. Like when you heard the trumpets, it was a sound you would not you would not hear normally. If you hear the trumpets, like something special is going on because there just aren't instruments like that around. Um, the other thing is, is that it makes a little more sense why there's a whole tribe dedicated to temple work because you have to have people in a rotation who have dedicated their lives to learning how to play this instrument and can play it well. And their whole job is to okay? And you need to, it's, it has, that has to be someone's job. You can't just walk in and, and have anybody do that. Or else going to be a Levite. That's the circulation of Levites who teach each other how to do this. Now, we saw two trumpets, exactly as is described. Actually, what you see in Tutankhamun's um, temple, oh, my um, is you see one bronze and one, or one, sorry, one copper and one silver. Here's a question. Did Moses just steal all of the Egyptian instruments and make them into a Raise your hand. Did he steal it at all, or did he come up with, come, come up with it himself? No? What do we think? Raise your hand. God told them, okay. That's fair. That's a pretty creepy resemblance to uh, Egyptian practice here. Kind of seems like he's stealing Egyptian ideas. The cisterns being used, the trumpets being used. Right? <laughs> I think that's true. I think that's fair. There's something you said a bit ago when I said, is it okay for those Ethiopians and Coptic churches to be using systems? They're like, well, it's just because it's a pagan thing. It doesn't mean that we can't use worship to God. Yes, God told, God told Moses to use trumpets. But let's, let's entertain for the moment the idea, just for a second, Moses plagiarized Egypt. Well, you know, he, tell you what, Moses, he was adopted by the Pharaoh, by Pharaoh's daughter, he learned all the Egyptian stuff, and he was in the Let's just go with that for a second. Does anyone know when the, the um, Exodus would have happened? Any guesses? There are two proposed dates. Write this down. Two proposed dates, either the 13th century or the 15th century C to BC. Gosh, BC is blasphemy today. BC. <laughs> 13th or 15th century BC. I don't know if you guys. 13th or 15th. So they, they either left in the 15th or the 13th. And I'm not here to defend one or the other. It could be the 14th. Sure, I mean, that is the fault, but just to give you an idea, that's about the range where historians play us. There we go. Yes, does this count? Oh, yeah.
Not with any of October 1925, after three years of excavating.
And now the young son will be blown by Bannerman James Chapman, which is by the Christian child, the Colonel and Officer of the 11th Prince Albert Yellow Star. I must say that he is on the same ship as he needs to start. And this is particularly true of the Cockers. The former one will be hurt. The Cockers of the Bannerman, who come from the Lord of the Crown, King of the South and North. Right. <laughs> 